Batteries have held so much weight in our lives ever since we received our first handheld football game from our favorite aunt, only to realize that it was garbage because she didn't spring for the double A's. Well, a new prototype from North Carolina State researchers might help give batteries the boot by harvesting body heat and using it to power wearable electronics. Wearable thermoelectric generators, or TEGs, which generate electricity using the temperature differential between your body and the air, have been made before. But previous designs used heat sinks, which are stiff and bulky, and they could only generate one microwatt per centimeter squared. Well, the TEGs from NC State don't use a heat sink, so they're lighter, and they generate up to 20 microwatts per centimeter squared. The new design has a layer of thermally conductive material that rests on the skin and spreads out the heat. That is topped by a polymer layer that prevents the heat from dissipating through the outside air and forces the body heat to pass through a centrally located TEG that is only one centimeter square. The entire system is only two millimeters thick and it's flexible. The researchers also found that the upper arm was the optimal location for heat harvesting and even built a TEG into a smart t-shirt that could generate as much as 16 microwatts per centimeter squared when you're running. So, I mean, I'll stick to six. That is, that is how much you harvest when you're walking casually to the local fast food station. Is that a thing? Fast food station? That's not a thing. I can't talk good. In the mid 1980s, Stephen Cabernetti began filling his home with video games and software. Possibly the world's first techno hoarder, he had 25,000 games, everything from early word processing programs like WordStar to vintage releases of Pong, Doom, and SimCity piled to his ceilings. In 1995, when he was 29, he died of Hodgkin's lymphoma, so he would never see what would become of his vast collection. But now, thanks to the Stanford University Libraries and the National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST, his collection has achieved a digital immortality of sorts. Stanford acquired the collection in 2009, and working with NIST, they have just completed a multi-year effort to rescue the collection's deteriorating digital content. That salvaged data is now archived on servers at the Stanford Digital Repository and has been added to NIST's National Software Reference Library, a resource that supports digital forensics investigations. You see, NIST maintains this collection not to preserve cultural history, that's where Stanford comes in, but NIST uses it as a forensic tool for law enforcement. NIST runs every file through a hashing algorithm that generates a unique digital fingerprint and makes them publicly available. They have more than 180 million of them so far. According to NIST, when investigators seize a computer as evidence, they use these digital fingerprints to help separate irrelevant files from those that might contain evidence. This could also be the greatest emulator of all time. I mean, if you could go back in time and play any game, what would it be? Jinko Racing, Nail Toads. No, no, you are both wrong. It is Trog for Nintendo or Wetrix for N64. Although I don't need an emulator for those. I can just go to my house in my basement and play those in the dark because I can't let anything go. So I used to be very lonely. I can't talk good. I understand that Scully and how the company put a sour crowdfunding taste in many mouths after going bankrupt, you know, for spending every dime on cars and hookers, but the Wazer, now the Wazer, the desktop water jet printer on crowdfunding site Kickstarter, I mean, the Wazer looks pretty promising. You'll need a big desk, as the Wazer is nearly three feet wide, a little more than two feet deep, and 21 inches tall, and it weighs 300 pounds fully loaded, but backers were clamoring for this water jet that cost the first 30 backers only $3,600. Traditional water jets can cost up to 100 grand, so it's understandable that the company then quickly sold out of its second tier of machines. 120 units offered at $4,000. Once it hits the market, the Wazer will retail for $5,999, which is still an incredible price point. In a little more than a day, the company raised nearly $650,000 for more than 300 backers. The team met at Penn Engineering, where they built custom race cars for the FSAE International Competition. The company began its undergraduate research to try and create the first low-cost water jet prototype. Well, it worked. And when they realized that they were onto something big, the team spun off into a new company. In 18 months, the team has gone through five generations of prototypes, assembled a team of engineers, and spent eight months in Shenzhen, China, at the Hacks Accelerator, the world's first and largest hardware accelerator, according to the company. Well, with 58 days remaining in the campaign, and the hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars yet to come, here at IEN, we wish them the best of luck in hitting those delivery dates. 
Just, you know, just stay away from the sports cars and the fast ladies. For full specs, check out Wazer on Kickstarter. I mean, maybe we'll even have a few left by the time this airs. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's just crazy. They raised $35,000 in the time that it took me to write this. Probably, probably another 70 in the time that it took me to shoot this because I can't talk good today. I'm talking bad. I'm David Manti. This is Engineering by Design.